Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are safe and healthy. So let's continue our journey to learn data science. So in the last video, we have discussed what is visualization, what is the impact of visualization, what are different visualization tools we have, and we had a brief working of Tableau. In case if you have missed out my previous video, the link is attached in this video. Kindly go and check it out. So let's continue the Tableau part. So we will see what are the different visualization charts we have in W that empower our visualization that makes our data more interesting and memorable by everyone. So let's see what are different types of charts we have. So we have line charts, cone charts, bar charts and line charts in combination. We have bar charts, we have histograms, we have pie charts, we have bubble charts, we have geographical maps and n number of charts which help us to visualize our data better and in, and in an effective manner. So let's begin with the very first fundamental chart that is line chart. So line chart is the fundamental technique that is used to represent data. In this we have two axes x and y axis and on the x axis we have the control variable or the input variable and on the y axis we have the response variable or the output variable. It is basically used to visualize the trend between the control variable and the response variable. Let's see an example. So in this we have two examples. One is for single line chart and one is for multiple line chart. In the single line chart we want to analyze the trend of number of students participating in sports activity. We can see that in the month of January to March, the number of students enrolled in sports activity are 250, which started increasing in the month of April and it reaches beyond 300 till the month of July. So we are analyzing the trend of participation of students in different different months of a year. In the second case, we want to analyze the trend of mobile usage between different types of gender, men and women. We can easily see that from 1996 to 2002, the usage of mobile phones is almost equal among men and women. And if we want to combine the usage of both the genders, we can see that it almost summed up and we reaches the graph here. So next type of graph we have is bar chart. Bar chart is basically used to represent categorical variables. In this, the height of the bar represents the value of a particular variable. So in this case, if you don't know what are categorical variables, you can check out my previous video. The link is attached. So in this, we have two types of bar chart. One is single column and one is multiple column. So in single column, we analyze the behavior of one variable and in multiple column, we analyze and compare the behavior of two variables of our data set. In this single column, we have a taken example of number of police officers admitted in the services. We can see that in 1993, the number of police officers were more and there is a decline in the number of police officers admitted to the services till the year 1996 and after that, the number of police officers increased till the year 2001. Similarly, in this case, we are analyzing the number of students who are appearing in the examination and we want to compare the number of boys and number of girls who are participating in examination. We can clearly see that in every year, the number of boys participating in the examination are more as compared to girls, except for the year 1998. So this is a way we used to compare two variables using bar chart. So let's take a one more in this example. So this is an example of number of cars sold on the yearly basis from 1999 to 2003. If you look at the figures clearly, then you can see that there is no significant difference among the number of cars sold year by year basis. But the bar chart that is being represented here is showing a significant year difference between the year 2001 and 99 and 2000. Although there is only a difference of 5 units and 15 units on the yearly basis. So do you think anything is wrong in this graph? Yes, because we have chosen the scale wrongly. So on the y-axis, we have chosen a wrong impression of scale because we are differentiating with the scale of 5 only. If we correct this graph on the scaling basis, so the graph will look like something like this. So we have scaled our graph uh, on the y-axis with a unit of 500 each. And then we can clearly see that from the 1999 to 2003, the number of units of cars sold are almost equal. So it is very important to choose a correct scale in the bar chart so that the actual 
change in the graph or in the data is being depicted using bar graph and we don't have any false interpretation of data. So next type of chart we have scatter plot. So scatter plot are used to uh, measure the correlation between two variables and how does the variable vary with effect of another variable. Next type of chart is pie chart. Pie chart basically summarizes the set of categorical or nominal data. So for categorical and nominal data, you can refer to my previous video. The link is attached. So in this example, let's say we have taken up a question that how long we should have a lecture. So the only 10% students say that we should have a long lecture and only 90% of the students say that we should not have a long lecture. So this distinction is being done by pie charts very easily. We have to keep one thing in mind that we should not segment our pie charts in more number of variables because then it is hard to compare. If we have more number of variables to compare, then we should use bar chart. Now, now come the very important question that which type of graph you should use and when do we use all these kind of graphs. So the basic difference is being analyzed here. So if you are using line graph, line graph is used when we want to visualize a trend. So for line graph, we should have a quantitative variable and a contiguous variable on the x axis so that we don't have any missed data in this. So if we have these kind of variable and without any missing data, we can use line graph. If we want to compare the difference between two variables or a difference between one variable based on the relative point, then we can use bar chart. Bar chart is basically used for comparison. So next is scatter plot. Scatter plot are basically used when we want to study the relationship between two variables. That is, how does a change in one variable affect the change in another variable? Let's say if I want to study the relationship between the number of ice cream units sold based on the rise in temperature, I will use scatter plot because I know that with the increase in temperature, the rise of ice cream will also increase. So for this kind of analysis, we use scatter plot. In another case, when we want to differentiate on the basis of proportion of different categories of a particular variable, then we use pie chart. So, except these type of graph, we have another type of graph such as bubble charts, tree maps and geographical maps. So, let's study one by one. So, bubble charts. Bubble charts are basically represented by circle and let me see an example. So, this type of graph is called a bubble chart. Let's see if we want to analyze how the US government had spent $3.7 trillion on which which areas, we can use bubble chart for that. So we can easily see that US government had spent maximum amount of money on Social Security Administration, followed by Treasury, followed by Defense, followed by Defense, and Military and Personnel, and then followed by Employment, and then on different, different areas. So how can I analyze this? I can analyze this by the size of the bubble, by the circumference of the bubble. So the more the circumference of the bubble, the more amount of emphasis has been given on this particular category. So if I want to analyze various categories in the form of a variable, then we can use bubble chart. So next type of chart we have is pair plot. Now pair plot is a 2D scatter plot. In scatter plot, we analyze only two variables on the x-axis and the y-axis. In pair plot, we can analyze all the variables with itself. So if I have different variables such as mpg, cylinders, horsepower, weight, acceleration, year and origin, I can analyze the relationship between all these variables with each one of them on the x-axis and y-axis. So in this example, we can see that weight variable and the horsepower variable are positively correlated and they are working in a linear manner. So I can analyze that uh, the variable mpg and year is scattered. So to analyze the behavior of all the variables together, we use pair plot. Next we have tree maps. Tree maps are basically used to represent the sales data. So tree like maps, we have the hierarchical structure in the form of nested rectangles. Let's have a look of it. So this graph is called as a tree map. Here, I want to analyze the sales of a particular company with respect to various teams it has. So I'm analyzing the sales in the year of 2017 to the year of 2021. 
So let's see in the 2017, a company has only outsourcing team which has a sale, which has increased in 2018. In 2019, the company has two more teams, product team and QA team, and the sales has been represented in terms of rectangles, which has been increased in the year 2021. We can see that the sales of product team has increased as compared to the sales in 2019. And outsourcing team has also been increased, but the sales of QA team has been decreased a lot as compared to 2019. Similarly, we can differentiate the trend in the year 2021. We can see that product team has been contributing the maximum sales of a company followed by the outsourcing team and QA team. So in this type of maps, we don't have to actually see the figures of sales of different different teams in a company. We can just draw the rectangles based on the sales and we can visualize it in few seconds so next type of maps we have in uh, w we have three types of maps one is symbol maps the other one is chloropath maps or called as filled maps and the last one is called as point distribution maps so let's see all of them one by one so next is symbol maps so symbol maps are this kind of graph where we want to analyze a variable change of variable across different geographical locations. So for example, if I want to study the population in the year 2007 across the country, we can see that the population in this particular region is more and in this particular region is very less. How can we say that? By the size of the symbol. So symbol used here is circle. So in symbol map, we use three types of symbols, circle, squares or triangle. So the bigger the symbol, the more population or the more quantity of that particular variable is there in the geographical location. So we can have three types of symbols here. The small symbol circle is representing 1 million of population. The medium size circle is representing 5 million of population and the bigger circle is representing 10 million of population. So we can see that these this area is densely populated but 10 million of population and this all area is also being densely populated. This is the biggest area where the population is more than 10 million, followed by this particular area. Rest of the areas in the world are mildly populated or very less populated. So if we want to analyze the change of a particular variable across different geographical locations, we can use symbol map. Next type of map we have is chloropath maps or filled maps. Let's see. So chloropath maps are similar to symbol maps. The only difference between the chloropath map and the symbol map is that in chloropath map, we use colors. The more dense the color, the more the quantity of a particular variable across that geographical location. In this has been represented by a symbol in symbol map and in this chloropath map, we use color. So we can see that this area is densely populated as compared to the light color area. So we use color code coordination in chloropath maps. These maps are also called as filled maps. Next type of map we have is point distribution maps. So point distribution maps basically represents the distribution of a variable across different regions in the world or in a country. So we can see the more uh, thickly uh, distribution of the variable is there across the orange line, the less distribution of a variable is there across this dark blue line and so on. So these are the different visualization charts that we use in Tableau and the benefits of the visualization charts are it simplifies our statistics. They are more easy to understand. It adds credibility. That means it is easy for us to communicate to other users and it has a very large impact on our minds. So with this, I say that the visual charts are very important and this visualization of charts using Tableau is very much easy. So if you want to join me in the journey to learn Tableau, do contact me. So for more, for more such interesting videos, do subscribe to my channel and thank you for listening.